I'm joined by economic analyst Olushagun Okunade. Hello, Olushagun. Thank you so much for joining me at this time. Good morning, uh, good afternoon, good afternoon. Uh, good, afternoon. good afternoon to all our viewers across the globe. Uh, a little correction is Olushesan. Uh, Olu Olushesan. Apologies for that. Yeah. Now, uh, Olushesan, uh, the president has actually insisted that his administration's decision to remove the petrol subsidy was necessary to prevent the country from going bankrupt. Now, what do you make of this statement? Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, going in by the statement uh, by the president, uh, indeed, the removal of subsidies what were, but there are areas to uh, fault the removal of the subsidy, considering the fact that uh, there are no other areas uh, to actually cushion the effect of some of the things that will reduce the pressure that we are currently being faced with uh, as a nation. First and foremost, a lot of us have said it that uh, removal of subsidy is inevitable, but there are certain things that were needed, that, that the government needed to put in place. Uh, first and foremost, the functionality of our refinery. You discover that Nigeria is the only country among the oil producing nations that is actually importing their own product, and that's quite disheartening. So we were actually thinking uh, with his speech, uh, a consideration was given that before the end of last year, precisely December, the Port Harcourt refinery will actually be dispensing. Uh, that gave a lot of hope in such a way that uh, the other remaining four can come to mainstream before the end of this year. Mm. But as we speak to you, we discovered that the Port Harcourt on its own is here to bring out the commercial uh, production as expected, at least to cushion part of the effect. So you discover that in as much as the focus of Mr. President before now uh, was that subsidy was a scam and it's just been enjoyed by very few, uh, we understand that. But the truth of it is there are other measures. Those very few that are enjoying it trickle down to a lot of people that are down there. Uh, in as much well, as you well, want Mr. to Son, uh, you, you must you at did... the same time prepare for other aspects. Yes, if you can hear me, you did say that uh, Nigeria is the only uh, uh, oil-producing country that has removed fuel subsidy. And, uh, you know, how does President Tinubu's stance on fuel subsidy removal align with or differ from the approaches taken by other leaders facing similar economic challenges? Because, you know, this... Um, economic challenge is not just the Nigerians actually facing it. Some other countries are too. Can you hear me? For that question, uh, is the only uh, oil producing nation, I'm hearing you very well, the only oil producing nation uh, among OPEC that uh, currently uh, uh, imports or refined products outside its own shore. But going by your question, uh, there's a global economic crisis. We all understand that. And a lot that most other countries are doing is to see how they can domesticate some of the things that they are doing. And I think that is what we are lacking in the country. As a nation, we have every raw materials. Uh, we have all the natural blessings, uh, which we call the natural uh, 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 resources, uh, embedded in us from uh, uh, gold to coal to every other thing. But you ask yourself, how many of it are we maximizing for the benefit of all the citizens? Uh, you discover from the word that we heard from the Minister of Solid Mineral that this is just uh, something in the hands of very few, uh, which is quite disheartening because this was meant for uh, the, 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 the old citizen where very few are actually enjoying the largesse. That's a problem that I feel that we need to start addressing. Some of the other countries... I uh, think, for example, China, Malaysia, UK, and all those people that have natural resources look for an intentional act to make sure that those things are processed within the comforts of their country. Uh, because aside those things, the byproduct that you get from the natural resources that you're actually processing can be used for other things. So when you push it out uh, to other countries to process for you, an example is the crude oil. I, I keep asking myself, when we push out crude oil for other nations to, to process for us, we are the byproduct like the jelly, uh, the bitumens, the other things that we get, the fertilizers that we get from it that we can use as input into other arms of the government. 
these other people that you are pushing it to, they are actually utilizing those other ones at no cost to them because you consider it as a byproduct. That is why I would say the thing that we are yet to do as a nation, different from what other countries are doing, is that they domesticate their production in such a way that the natural resources that they are blessed with uh, are actually processed, are uh, refined within the comforts of their albeit. You can imagine the process of gold, the process of coal, and all other natural resources, if it's actually being processed here, you discover that will create employment and will be able to empower people. That's the difference between us and those other uh, leaders who are actually creating a sort of relief for their people. And on the final note on, on that, I think uh, the aspect of corruption is not allowing us to make a, di a difference. Uh, the system is so uh, endemic in such a way that uh, a, a lot of people are actually just doing what they like with the natural resources and God-given uh, uh, resources that is meant for every citizen of this country. Right now, uh, talking about creating relief for their people, uh, quite a number of palliative programs have actually been rolled out by the government, which seems like a drop in the ocean, especially in mitigating the impact of the removal. I uh, remember we've had states, uh, states were given 5 billion naira each, uh, you know, uh, the release of metric tons of grains, you know, from the food reserves and some other, you know, palliative measures. Now, what other strategies do you think governments can implement to mitigate the negative effects on vulnerable populations? Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, you see, when, when you say some of the uh, palliative being created by the government is like uh, drops of water in the ocean. I, I will object to that to say that the problem will lie is there is no accountability. Majority of these things uh, you discover that are in the hands of very few as uh, something that should go around. And that's the problem we, we try to speak to uh, each time we're talking corruption. Everyone wants to seize every opportunity granted to him as uh, enriching himself and his loved ones, which is against the law of nature. Uh, and that's one of the problems uh, we are faced with. If you ask what are the other measures that uh, the government can do, I think it's high time to start looking how to create an enabling environment. Don't forget the president in his speech at the uh, World Economic Summit said, we have a yearning youth who are ready uh, to be creative. But you ask yourself, what are those things that will actually revamp uh, or, or, or uh, uh, take the, the, the youth towards the state? We don't have power. I can tell you practically in the last one and a half, two weeks, it's been darkness all around. Uh, if you're not in band A, the rest of us have no access to power supply. And you expect somebody who wants to create something, who wants to be innovative, uh, what are the, uh, the, 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 the power supply that he needs to use to do that particular thing? At times, some people decide to work at night because that's more convenient for them. But there is no power. You talk about security. Uh, people want to go into other areas because you say this inter-state uh, uh, relationship is very key and fundamental. But you discover that people are afraid to travel between here and the east to even go and do what they have to do. Uh, when you have to fly, put the cost of that particular thing in your operating cost, it will not be there. So I feel government need to create a system in such a way that they can checkmate the activities that they are actually pushing. A lot of those palliative are always in the hands of the very few. Don't forget, as we speak, we are still battling with the issue of the Ministry of Humanitarian uh, without hearing anything. Within the space of that period, look at the, the amount of millions that were actually uh, seen being misappropriated by a very single... And those are, that's the ministry that is to cater for the vulnerable, that is actually misappropriating some of the funds. We've asked ourselves, do we even have database to give relief to business organizations, people that have been paying taxes, what relief are you giving to them in such a way that they can improve their productivity? A lot of them are investing into infrastructure that are supposed to be provided by the government, and they are not getting relief for some of these things. So if those operating costs are high, how do you expect them to increase the bottom line of, uh, of getting more staff to grow their business? I think those are areas that government should start uh, looking towards, how we can domesticate and create the business environment that will make the businesses uh, to grow in our nation. So, Olusha, so before we uh, let you go, what are the main takeaways from President Tinubu's speech regarding the broader implications of fuel subsidy removal for economic policy and governance? 
Yeah, uh, the, the, the speech, as far as I'm concerned, was well crafted, but I would say that it doesn't speak to the reality. Uh, during your highlight, you stated what an average citizen is facing. Even uh, with the removal of the subsidy, the availability is not there. I, I don't want to share with you uh, what I faced yesterday uh, in getting poor that will take me to the office this morning. Uh, a, a lot of uh, this that is happening, I can tell you, authoritative people are actually losing their lives. Somebody collapsed while I was struggling to even get fuel yesterday. So you can imagine the hardship. We are not even complaining that uh, uh, the, the price is high. But you talk about the availability and with what Ipman is saying, that we have to uh, go through this for the next two weeks before we can have stability. And uh, the reason that I've been given are actually uh, shocking to me, saying that uh, people are not renewing their license. What is the heads up that the regulators that are meant to do this are doing for the people that are supposed to do it, rather than waiting till the tail end when those things, uh, people will be incapacitated. Uh, going through this for two weeks, I don't know the impact of it on Nigeria, but I can tell you to create more hardship. Because the challenge is all of us feel relieved that subsidy is gone and uh, we'll have availability of the product. But that's not what we are facing now. And you can imagine the power is not there. You are not having access to the PMX or DPK easily uh, to actually use as alternative power supply. And you can, I can tell you, every businessman, what they are facing as we speak. So government need to be intentional about certain policy that contribute to the economic growth. And uh, above all, they must start considering consistency in their policy. We seem not to have that. Just a few weeks ago, we heard about the drop in foreign exchange. You can, I'm sure you know what the current price is actually talking to. So how many businessmen can actually prepare uh, or, or plan for the next few weeks about you know things that they need to do? So government need to be consistent with their policy in such a way that will give the business uh, uh, owners or the business environment that comfort zone for them to plan ahead. And with that, uh, people can actually, uh, the investment that the federal government or the president is actually bringing on board can start manifesting and uh, the citizen can be beneficiary of it. All right. Well, thank you so much, uh, Olu Shesson Okunade, for joining me and speaking on this. Thank you very much, uh, Doshan, for having me. Uh, okay. It's a great day to be with you on this show this afternoon. It's a pleasure. <music>